Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome to another live session with The Hype Magazine. I'm your editor-in-chief, Jerry Doby, and this evening, I've got the distinct honor of being with the young man who is the subject and maybe the hesitant subject of a brand new documentary that's coming out called The Mad Writer, and he is Laurent. He is a producer and an artist. He's had his hands on work. Cool Keith, if you know the legend Cool Keith, brother, Body in the Morgue was my favorite song by Cool Keith, by the way. And, uh, you know, this young man has touched and graced some big records. But he's quiet, stays in the background. But now he's come to center stage, forced by his friend Zach, childhood friend, uh, to stay sit still and let people follow him around with the camera for a documentary. Laurence, thanks for being with us, man. It's an absolute pleasure. I appreciate you having me on. Man, it's amazing. So you have some anxiety issues that you've dealt with. And I guess a lot of creative people do. I don't make music and I don't throw my work. Well, I guess I do throw my work out there for millions of people to read, but at the same time, you know, not too many judge me. They they more judge the artists and things. So, from the inside looking out, talk to us about Laurent, the creator. Well, you know, I've always I've always told people, and this isn't always what people want to hear, but I've always told people that I'm I'm really not. I don't think of myself as much of a musician, and. And the the hardest thing for people to my you know people that I that I work with and I know to to hear and to understand is that I'm not I'm really not that interested in musicianship in itself. Um, I'm I I am and always have been just a sort of generally vaguely creative person. And so uh, I I wanted to be a writer when I was a kid. I mean that's what you know um, I had always dreamed of, and that's what I went to school for even. Uh, I love to paint. I love to, you know, um, you know, so when I, when it came to making music, it was really the concepts and it was the feeling and it was the emotion and it was trying to get across um, what I had to say rather than um, getting across my own skill or my own um, uh, craft or abilities. It was more, I, I wanted, I felt like music was a way for me to get um, something that I, I really didn't have the words to uh, uh, to say um, to people's ears, and so that was that was something that was real important to me, uh, you know. And from a a real real young age, I, I was just a very you know sort of depressed and, and anxious kid, you know, from like I don't know, like eight years old or something. It was you know I think it was kind of an unusual sort of sort of case to for people to see. But, um, you know, and so I spent a lot of time on my own and I spent a lot of time in my own head. And from all of that, you know, sort of birthed um, whatever sort of um, uh, channeling into some sort of creativity that I could. Do you, was there a defining moment for you where you said, okay, music is my best form of communication? That's a good question. I mean, even when I first started my studio, I was, and I started switching from playing live music to doing exclusively production. I was, I was also running a studio as an engineer. And, uh, but the whole time I was in school for creative writing. Um, I was, a, I was in school for, um, for uh, poetry. And, and so that was really where my, my head was at, you know? And so, um, and to be completely honest, I wasn't exactly uh, feeling encouraged by my community and, and the people that were hearing my music. I just, I believed in it so much. And I believed that what I was making was unique. Um, and and it, it was, it was very important to me, you know, but it wasn't what I thought I was going to do. But I, I had a, um, uh, my appendix burst. And mm. And I was at home and I was living with some people that, you know, that, that weren't going to pay attention if you're appendix first, you know? And so I, uh, uh, 
I almost died of up in my room and I had a, you know, emergency surgery to deal with that. But while I was going through that, uh, it was the end of the semester and I uh, got a notice that they had failed me out of all these classes because I hadn't medically withdrawn, you know? Mm. And that was probably the most defining moment because in that moment I thought, okay, I can go back to school. You know, they, I just have to tell them I was in the hospital and they'll work with me, you know, but, or, you know, or I can kind of like push through with this music thing. And like, I had just finished my very first album and, you know, and I had an opportunity to move to Nashville and work with this little startup. And so I decided to kind of bail on all that and um, go in the uh, direction of music. And on the very first day that I moved to Nashville, I was staying in a hotel room with my dog. And I, uh, on my laptop, I put out the Manipulation EP, which was my first album I ever, I ever did. It was, I distinctly remember that. So if there was any sort of pivot or pivotal moment, you know, switching from being in North Carolina to moving to Nashville and pursuing music, I mean, the pendulum swing in a big way. Mm. Okay. And so the new project that you're talking about is Marlowe 3, which is um, the obviously the third part in the series. And it seems to me like this series is kind of important to you because you're uh, continuing in a vein that you started. Now, there are some differences in the production, some different nuances and layers and, you know, some really masterful application of timbre and intonation from the sonic side, as well as, you know, the, the, the verbals. So talk to me about this journey with Marlo. So Marlo it, it is very important. It's very personal to me because it is with my, with my closest friend, you know, Solomon Brigham is uh, somebody that I've known since uh, back before, you know, my appendix was bursting <laughs> and, uh, you know, and so we made music a long time ago and uh, we hadn't in a very long time. And I was, I was feeling a little, um, you know, lonely in the music industry and lonely with my music. And I, I wanted to do something different. And so I, I reached out to him and, and see if he would do an album with me. And I mean, at that point, he wasn't even um, uh, he wasn't even rapping, but he just, you know, um, we did it because, you know, we because we love each other. We wanted to have fun and we wanted to be creative and uh, making fun music was new. That isn't something I had ever done before. I never in my life sat down and, and tried to make a song to be fun. Mm -hmm. um, and so making music for his voice and making music to represent me as well, but having to make it in a different way or in a way that I don't necessarily see myself was, you know, it was really good for me. It was healthy. It made me look at myself in a way that, you know, was, was positive or was, um, you know, maybe things that I'm not on a daily basis, you know, uh, like extroverted or loud or uh um or f fun you know and so uh going back to those albums is is a is a trip for me because every time i work on them it's really an out of body kind of you know it's a fish out of water sort of thing where i'm i'm making this music that goes against my natural instincts but that's part of the fun and that's part of the challenge mm. so i have to follow up on that whoop what music would follow your natural instinct? Would it be something from the goth kind of realm? What, what, no, it what wouldn't happened? be. No, it's 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 just very, uh, you know, I always say, I always used to say that I make music for people that are stoned and also sad, you know, or like, uh, or uh, like music when you, when you, when you're walking, you know, somewhere and you're wearing headphones and you can't hear anything and you walk past somebody going the opposite direction, you know, and then you accidentally make eye contact with them, you know, while you're listening to music. And then you think like, wow, that person probably has a whole story. Mm. That's the music I make. Make music for that moment right there. Okay. No one's ever put it to me like that. I'm like, that, that's dope. And then as I'm listening, I'm going, and now that you, you present the scenario, I'm thinking me listening to a, uh, Larange project walking in the park let's just say Central Park your music is so 
involved. It's very complicated, but full bodied. It's so full bodied that you really can't pay attention to anybody else. So making eye contact is probably not something I do. If I did, it would be like one of those wild, crazy, oh, the shrooms just hit moment. <laughs> like bang. <laughs> That's it's it's funny you say that because you know after after I had been coming in I came in doing instrumental music it was all I all I did for the most part with a couple little features um mm -hmm. but it, it was right as I was starting to work with rappers uh this you know uh beats to study to thing you know started coming up and that always made me laugh because that's like exactly the opposite I know a lot of people like to work with my music whether it's doing you know painting or writing or drawing or whatever but like, man, I do not make, I make music that you should not study to. Like, uh, uh, I'm, I'm actively trying to like, fuck with the person who's listening. Sorry if I can't curse. No, you're good, you're fine. Yeah. You're good. I'm actively trying to mess with somebody because I, I want them to be engaged. I don't want them to go to a place where they're vibing along naturally. And at the end of it, that's that. I want to in the middle, like I before, if I catch myself, going into sort of the zen like stand or uh, trance when i'm listening to my own music that's i gotta i gotta switch it up i mean this has to be a story every every um you know every every song within the greater project has to be its own hero's journey you know mm. so uh it can't it can't just be one feeling the whole time i just refuse to let that happen yeah i noticed there's like no Laurent's signature. It's um, unique, powerful, engaging, draws you in. You know, they talk about leaning forward in a conversation and your music makes me lean forward. And I'm an asshole uh, when it comes down to music. Obviously, you know, I get 200 submissions a day, right? And so when I got this one, I was like, Really, I want to check it out. Why have I never heard of this guy? And, you know, what's the problem with his team that I'm just hearing about him until now? You know what I mean? And then I started to read the bio and do some background and um, checked a few articles. And I'm going, okay, now I get it. I understand. I was like this, um, you know, in a prior life. And I was like, I get it. I get it. Don't that's, put me. I'm going to reach out to you when I'm ready and the way in which I'm ready. That's um, that's probably, you know, being told that I'm seen or being told that you you understand that or that you feel it is there's no there's no greater. I don't even know if it's a compliment. There's no greater feeling you could give me, you know, to, to hear that really like that's when I first started making music, I felt so out of place everywhere. I felt so uh, uncomfortable and, you know, people put so much effort into trying to be different or trying to feel different. And I got to tell you, man, it's not that great. And <laughs> I feel, I felt different every single place I went and I didn't feel good about it. And so when I started making music, that was one thing that really inspired me to have a vision for what I wanted to say is because I didn't feel understood, but I wasn't necessarily trying to make people understand me. I was trying to find people that were like me, that were like you, that were, uh, that also felt like that and just make, you know, make them feel seen, you know? Yeah, I understand. I, um, you know, I grew up in the military, I'm, I'm retired military, but I grew up in a military family, right? So we moved all the time. And um, it's crazy because I was, and I'm not trying to lay this at your feet, but I was too dark for the white kids to play with. And I was too light skinned mm. for the black kids to play with. So books and words became my friends mm. and learning how to, as you say, fuck with people with the use of the King's English became my whole goal in life. And obviously it, it just figures that I would get a second career as a freaking journalist right so <laughs> i i'm loving it and so your story it meets me where i'm at kind of 
You know what I mean? So how far into they, go ahead. how far into your novel are you? You have to be. Uh, you know, actually, I just had a meeting uh, with the publisher mm -hmm. to um, discuss the process of writing the book and getting some um, <clears throat> uh, process uh, guidance. F fiction or nonfiction? Um, well, because I've just, I, I, only, I only retired in 2013 from the military. So um, as far as my security clearance is concerned, I have some years left before right. I can really talk. Um, it, so fiction for now, nonfiction in a few years. Perhaps <laughs> metaphorical. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll figure it out. You know, I want to be able to get all the juice out of the meat, so to speak, at the same time, not be reactivated, court-martialed, and go to prison. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, maybe I'll just do it on the, the power of language and the power of words and, and uh, do something like that. And you later should. on, I'll, I'll do something biographical, maybe. Yeah. I've been invited by several publishing houses. I'm like, bro, I can't. I got a title. I got a pitch for you on a title if you're writing it about language. I'm listening. The style of elements. It's a flip on the elements of style by Strunk and White. I wrote that down. I'm writing it down. That's why I'm quiet. Not bad. I, I don't I couldn't I couldn't break it down for you. That was an initial thought, right? I think it only goes that one layer right now. But it might, but it might have legs. No, that's pretty good. Because actually, you know, just like with building a, a track or a song, uh, you guys start with an idea. Maybe you're sitting at the lunch table and somebody says something clever and then mm -hmm. go, oh, wow, that's a hook. And then from there, the concept starts to develop the style of elements because writing for this day and age has such a different style, you know, a long time ago, they came up with the upside down pyramid uh, mm -hmm. style for writing for the web, which it still applies today. But um, with that also comes the different styles, like you've got AP style, AP down style, and the style of elements. And then within the story, the who, the elements of the story, the who, what, when, where, why, which is the same thing every, every song maker, song writer is telling, but in a clever clever fashion much clever less direct fashion than a, a, a writer maybe so i you know, I don't know how much. Energy, bro. why are we talking about all right real quick real quick i got one more is i don't know how much it, it, whatever you're doing would potentially overlap with your current career in terms of hip-hop but there's also a potential hip-hop layer to that to that title when you're talking about the different elements mm. you know but. Okay. explore the hip-hop element okay and that's not even a request. Honestly, I would prefer to hear the one that's just about language. But if you end up with a hip hop lean in, lean in that, then you know you can you can double down on that uh, on that layer. I will. Uh, it will be it will be long. <laughs> it'll be it'll be long. It'll be it'll be. I'll try to make uh, uh, it worthy of people who pay attention. You know what I mean? That's, that's the whole. That's the whole game love it so with me being roped into to writing a book tell me how you got roped in um to being the subject of the mad writer which by the way is the title of one of your early singles my first album ever first album. my first uh, full album it was uh that was um sort of a autobiographical uh album i actually didn't know that's what they were going to call the documentary but mm -hmm. It's it's sort of you know it's sort of fitting because this it was the the first album I really did I wrote it's the only album I wrote distinctly about my own life, um, but uh, I got um, I got roped into to doing this because um, my friend had been asking me to do it for years, and he didn't really have a angle or a, he didn't have a pitch or a creative thing he just just to be completely honest with you he just thought I was a weird person 
And he thought, I bet people would watch that, you know? And, and so that was like a mix of flattering and something else, but eventually he pitched me a concept that I liked, you know, where he was talking about how, um, you know, you can make something about someone's life and you can make something that is um, mundane, very interesting. And that is, that's something that really appeals to me. I mean, that's something artistically that I, I really enjoy. And um, he pitched me on the concept of part of the narrative being this sort of um, uh, parallel meta uh, line with, with having make, made the movie, you know, while he's doing it. And so I, I really, I really liked his his vision for it. And and so my only, my only uh, uh, rule was that I just can't be involved in the creative because I'm not interested in doing something promotional. It just doesn't interest me creatively, and uh, and any influence that I would have over the final cut or what footage gets used or 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 what would would not be something I would be artistically interested in being a part of. Mm-hmm. So it's for you, it's not about, you know, getting your id stroked. It's tell the story as you see it and how I fit into this world and what you feel I'm contributing to the fabric of the musical landscape. And you know, it's surprising. Happened. It was surprising to me. I know I haven't seen the movie, but it was surprising to me how it seemed to um only sort of circle music. It, whereas it, it is a music documentary, but the actual music of it seemed to take sort of a backseat. And again, I haven't seen it, but the um, the best feeling that I've gotten about this entire process is having watched um, a rough cut of the trailer a couple of days ago. And I I got this really good feeling because the the person on camera reminded me of me, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, that's not a guarantee. I mean, that's that's the thing that I most dread is if I walk away from that going, oh, wow, that guy seems like a good guy mm-hmm. and I'm not feeling like I want to feel insecure about being seen. I want to feel scared. I want to feel, you know, um, maybe, you know, regret or guilt or whatever comes with that, because if, if I don't feel that, then it wasn't worth doing. I mean, because I know who I I know who I was. I know who I am. I know who I, how I can come off and I know how my sort of like how I react to mental illness. And at the time of them shooting this, I was really going through a lot. So. Mm. I, uh, one of the opening uh, flashes you were saying, I think this is a a very bad idea, you know, Um, (laughs) it came to the documentary, but you know, later as I read the synopsis and all the the the, the paperwork, I'm going, yo, somebody should have done this before, you know, um, really capture the personality, and maybe even you know, in, in the time of silent film where they they told the story without even speaking, right? I was like. And they capture this person's personality without freaking saying a word. Can they describe them in visuals and make it stick? You know, I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. So now I'm getting, I just got the screener. So I, I haven't even seen the screener of the documentary. I'll watch it after we conclude our conversation. Um, I didn't want to ruin it or, you know, possibly throw out any spoilers or or ruin it ruin the experience for you because for you saying i'm not touching this creatively and i'm not watching that thing so congratulations on it being an official selection for the slam dance 2023 film festival um you know that's pretty amazing one of only two um music related films that are in the film festival this year so holds a pretty special place what are they 29 years in now and um i think uh slam dance is 29 years in and um so uh, uh, it's a pretty getting ready to be a benchmark year for them and then for them to have selected you know 
uh, The Mad Writer as one of the music related films. How, did you have any thoughts about that selection? I mean, I, I was very surprised. I mean, this, and honestly, this process, what I'm, you know, going through even right now, um, you know, with with having people, uh, you know, even congratulate me on my on my role in it. And I feel I feel like I'm uh, um, I'm 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 such a phony because I had nothing to do with this. This is I've released art before. I know what that feels like. You know what I mean? And for this, I'm like. I mean, I hope I do a good job. I mean, I, I guess I guess I'll take credit if if I can if I can get it, but I, I don't want the blame if it's bad though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Trump. I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? I did. Damn it. <laughs> Not me. Not me. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I'm gonna cut um, that. Oh, No, but it's it, but it's uh uh it's it I mean it's humbling. I mean, like I, I this was seven years ago when they started this. And I've had surgeries, I've gotten married, I've had lots of things in my life happen between then and now. And, uh, and it's, it's a wild experience. And I kind of assumed that this documentary was dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's, I wasn't waiting to hear back from the director. I mean, so when I heard back, the first time, the first note I got was, hey, we got accepted into this festival. And mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't know this world. You know, my first reaction was good for you, you know? Wow. wow it was like that's cool like oh, oh wait you mean my doc like you know it's it's just it was not on my brain at all but it, it's definitely at the front of my head now mm. you know i um your friend zach has a, a pretty good resume you know with a lot of netflix placements and adult swim and things like that you know um so as an editor you know, he's got a, he's got a, uh, a big list. So he's got a great eye for a story. And he's left a lot of content on the cutting room floor, you know, in order to create some great stories from the edit bay. So the um, fact that you were, you know, trusting him. And I have this great picture of you guys when you were young. That was pretty amazing. You know, like, you know, standing, you know, um, like that. I'm going, okay. And and that was one of the things I wanted to ask you about. Mm -hmm. <sighs> because the surgeries are covered inside of the documentary, and I, I don't know what to ask or how to phrase it without, you know, screw it, I'm going to ask it. So in your journey, um, making music depend on these tools the two tools that you know you've been given called ears um to have them attacked by a health issue can you give me a sense of how you felt the fear the level of fear how would you know what did you think it would do uh, if it couldn't be corrected to affect you moving forward? Well, you know, so it was a lot of things, you know, at first, at first I thought I was, I was, I was dying. The first doctors, you know, told me that it was, uh, it was, um, you know, like a, a, a potential brain cancer. And so um, to know that it was not, that was some, what of a relief, but I mean, it, to answer that question, it really ties in with where my mental health was at at that time. You know, uh, it, it's hard for me to separate the two because I was feeling so, um, I was going through so much in terms of mental health where, where I was very, very depressed and I was very anxious and I was kind of feeling um, kind of agoraphobic and didn't, didn't want to speak to people or talk to people. And I was kind of, there's a lot of sort of um, divergent sort of behavior that can go on when you're by yourself for so long and you're and you're making art. And so I spent I'm, I'm already before this spending so much time in my head. And, and, and so when I when I started having these symptoms, when I started bleeding from my ear, or um, you know, when hearing just would go out or come back or, you know, whatever, it, it, um, it took days for me to to even go to the doctor. I mean, I, I was. I was just sort of going through my days like a zombie uh, um, 
you know, acting like things were okay, kind of, you know, okay for me, I guess. But as, as we started getting closer to the surgeries, you know, there were so many of them that um, they got worse over time. The, the first one, I had a lot of hope. I had a lot of feeling like, okay, this may fix some things that I felt for a long time that maybe, maybe my ear will be better because of this, or maybe, be, you know, my hearing will, will correct out. And then after that one failed, and then the second one, uh, I was having less, I was feeling more inconvenienced and I was feeling less positive. And then by the third one where it was decided that they couldn't save my ear and they just had to um, destroy it, uh, um, that one was real tough. That one, you know, I was, I was honestly in a better place in terms of my life, but I, I just had to face that I wasn't going to hear anymore. And, uh, and that's tough. And you don't really know what's on the other end of that. Uh, and all the struggles and things that I've gone through since then are things that I didn't anticipate, but you do feel like you're losing something, um, very close to you. And, uh, it almost feels like you're losing something very romantic and, um, um, in, in core, you know, to, to yourself. But, uh, uh, there are a lot of things that, a lot of ways that I, I work around it. You know, I, I, I really rely on my sense of touch a lot. Like, um, you know, I learned pretty quickly that, you know, you can sort out, uh, uh, harmonies by, 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 by vibrations. And so just being able to have the volume loud enough that I can actually feel the notes that I can't really hear, or, or maybe I just can't even trust my brain to recognize, uh, it has been crucial for me, uh, not only as somebody that's making music, but someone that's listening to it. Mm. Wow. So, you know, that, that, that's deep. And really, you guys, you have to watch um, the documentary in order to get this. We're not going to go in too deep into it. After the 20th, uh, it actually... Yeah, the first screening is this Friday, uh, January the 20th at Treasure Mountain Inn in uh, Park City, Utah. And the guys, um, Zach, the, the director, and um, Austin here, LaRange, will be available for uh, Q&A. And um, perhaps after it screens, we could schedule another conversation and then we could get into it and really like tear it to this stake because that's what it is right there with some garlic potatoes and uh yeah I, I would love to have you back man i would enjoy that a lot i've really enjoyed talking with you i'm glad i, I do have to ask you this um and then I'll respect your time. I know it's late and thank you for the patience that you've shown me. Um, as you have created so many sounds and heard so many sounds and songs and things, are you the type that can still vibe out to music as a consumer or do you find yourself analyzing it or do you even waste the time trying to dissect? Do I have the capacity to vibe out with the song? Yes. Do, is it my first choice these days? Honestly, my answer is no, because um, I don't, I'm, I'm so wrapped up in it and I, and it carries so much weight for me now that it was sort of an un, unintended little side effect, you know? So when I say that I love music, I'm not lying music. I do love music. I love music. Like I love, you know, my family. I love my wife. I love, I love it. Like love is right. Where it's not just silly passion. It's, it's a give and take. And sometimes that means hating, you know, mm. and, uh, and so there's a, there's a, there's a, it's complicated. It, it is, there's a complicated relationship with music. And so 
when I want to listen to music for me personally, for my soul, what I go to is very, very old music. I go to very, very old jazz. I go to very old from, you know, the 40s and 50s because for whatever reason, I can turn off that part of my brain that analyzes and that criticizes because these songwriters are all gone. These songs are mostly standards. These are recording systems that haven't been done in 50 years. There's no part of this that I can give notes on. There's no criticisms. And, and honestly, the way it's recorded has so many imperfections and, and flaws and, and you can hear so much humanity in it that that's what I really love. And so when I'm listening to new music, I, 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 I really miss hearing people be human and not, not just in terms of um, like, I'm not, I'm not referring to drum machines. I'm not referring to electronic music. I mean, I want to see, I want to hear people's faults in their voices or, or hear people drag on, on bass lines, you know, and, and uh, we don't live in a world where people aren't going to point out mistakes, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. you know? so if, I, if I make a mistake on here, it's going to be a mistake. It's not going to be a, um, a part of the experience. What I've found is that we, for the, for the most part, except for serious creators like yourself, the music industry, especially, you know, those that are producers and A&R and &R people, they have evolved so far away from recognizing the humanity in music. It's like eating processed vegetables as opposed to fresh garden vegetables you know mm -hmm. so for me and like i said i'm pretty jaded and i don't make music i'm just learning how to play guitar at 59 years old right and uh just for the fun of it um i feel like the weightiness of music has gone by the wayside and we're, we're not even going to discuss lyrical content. I'm just talking about production value and sonics, um, you know, and there is like Reynolds rap, heavy duty tinfoil and sure fine, extra cheap tinfoil. <laughs> It's the same product, just not the same quality. It doesn't demand anything from you, yeah. uh, listener. It doesn't demand your participation, your aggressive listening. And um, those are the things that I, as a music lover, hunger for uh, when I listen. Look, man, I've had you on. Honestly, that's the, that's the exact thing I'm trying to tone down in myself these days is I found myself in my in my youth and my in in my you know early 20s constantly trying to challenge people like i referred to earlier and it's something that i'm really trying to choose my spots better now mm. i'm trying to do it for for in a more mature way in a way that can reward the listener for staying with me as opposed to earlier where it was almost you know like a prank it was almost like i was trying to bait out this conflict with this person because that was the only way i knew how to keep this attention right like don't don't fall asleep do not zone out here this is you're you're having a conversation with me you know now that's, i'm trying to be a little more rewarding that's the thing that's the thing having the conversation with the music with the creator through their presentation <coughs> excuse me that's good stuff that's good stuff. Okay, we're going to say something for part two. I'm glad you agreed earlier on to come back, man. This has been like already uh, one of my favorite conversations of 2023. We're early in, but when we come back next time, I actually get to cut loops and do the music journalist and fan stuff and ask those questions. And then we can re revisit the documentary with you having uh, watched it for the first time and then um i promise i will not watch it until after i've done the interview with zach just because 
I just I want to get this pure unadulterated conversation in that you know is not affected or you know guided by my view of the actual product so um follow-up is going to be mandatory and I'm going to have fun that will be fun that because will- by then by then we'll be old friends and old friends can hold each other to the hold each other to fire you know you can you can get it you can get on me for hold me accountable ah, and you can hold me accountable as well i read this <laughs> article look man this ah. really, that was a comma splice you should know that how did you miss that <laughs> right 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 i understand all right man look the high magazine live session is larange he is an amazingly talented creator and he is the subject of what I know is going to be an amazing, after having seen the trailer, uh, documentary, music documentary called The Mad Writer. It uh, was created by uh, Zach Keshitz and of course, Larange here. And Zach were childhood friends. They've been lifelong friends. And um, the product of this, this documentary is a product of love, admiration and trust between a couple of individuals to get this story out. I'm excited. It's been uh, picked up as an official selection uh, by the um, Slam Dance Film Festival. It's in Park City, Utah. It's jumping off Friday, January the 20th. And uh, hope you get a chance to go see it. I don't know what it'll do commercially, whether it'll be available on video on demand or anything. Maybe that's something we talk to the production house about and see what will happen with it. But for sure, the Hype Magazine will be supporting it um, each and every way we can. And uh, we're going to be supporting the launch. And right now, Marlo 3 is his latest project out. It is available on all DSPs. Demand, if you like steak, or a shiitake mushroom if you're vegan or whatever you like something full-bodied meaty that you can sink your teeth into bar for bar for bar for bar without even the lyrics ron just got that for you i appreciate you you know uh is a unique experience sonically and uh it was fun listening to the music and had a great conversation i want to thank you uh for trusting me with this conversation. It was a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. All right. All right, everybody. The Hype Magazine Live Sessions. Ranch. Till next time. We are out.